Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Game Changer. I'm Maryam Zia. In today's program, we will be talking about the unique friendship between Pakistan and Indonesia. Uh, Pakistan and Indonesia relations began about seven decades ago and Pakistan played an important role uh, when we talk about the independence of Indonesia as well. Uh, in today's program, we will be talking about the historic evolution of Pakistan's friendship and relations with Indonesia. Uh, when we talk about Indonesia, this is an important country when we talk about the ASEAN bloc and uh, how Indonesia can help Pakistan and how Pakistan can leverage its bilateral ties with Indonesia uh, to get into the ASEAN market we will be exploring in today's program. Of course, when we talk about historic uh, affinities and cultural affinities, uh, both are uh, Muslim countries and Indonesia is one of the largest Muslim countries of the world with over 261 million uh, Muslim population. Uh, when we talk about Indonesia, of course, this is one of the largest island countries of the world with over 70,000 uh, islands. Uh, so there are a lot of opportunities when we talk about the economic ties between both the countries in today's program. We will be talking about uh, these opportunities and the potential of expanding these relations. Uh, to discuss this and more, we're joined in the studios by Ambassador Naila Chohan. Welcome to the program. And we are also joined by Mr. Shahjar Khan, who is uh, expert in national affairs. Welcome to the program. Uh, we're joined online by Dr. Sen Jawed, who is economist and expert in national affairs. Welcome to the program. Uh, Ambassador Naila, let me start with you. When we talk about uh, this uh, relationship, with uh, Indonesia. Of course, this is an interesting relation. Both are Muslim countries, so there is uh, affinity, religious affinity as well between both the countries. Uh, but let's talk about how the diplomatic relations between the, both the countries uh, began. And of course, the Bandung Conf Conference also played an important uh, role in evolution of uh, those relations. Let's talk about that. Well, uh, you have jumped into decades. Yes, <laughs> because yes. Uh, the relationship started even before our independence. Yes, uh, Kaidi Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah was, uh, you know, a leader in that sense. That uh, when uh, the Indonesians were fighting for their independence, they were facing problems. And uh, although the process of decolonization in the world had started, but the colonial masters were not willing to let go. So the Dutch were not willing to let go of Indonesia as their colony. So at that time, the Muslims of South Asia, because at that time it was South Asia, of it was course. not India and it of was course. not Pakistan, but they were Muslims and they went there about 600 yes and out of them 500 lost their lives that's a big sacrifice right of course uh, this is an important uh, contribution of the muslims of the uh, south asia when we uh, talk about this but do you think that uh, this uh, historic ties between both the countries uh, translated into the diplomatic uh, relations between both the countries as we talk of uh, those relations as of now definitely Definitely. So when you talk about history, you see that's the roots. And from then on develop the relationship. So after that, Indonesia became uh, very um, active in the world platforms. And Sukarno decided to create a non-aligned, because it, at that time it was Jamal Abdul Nasir yes. and Sukarno and Nehru and of course Kaidi Azam, they all thought that uh, uh, this Cold War scenario was oppressive for developing countries. Yes. Consequently, in Bandung Conference, uh, Pakistan was specially invited. Right, in 1955. Yes. Uh, and after that, Pakistan and Indonesia have been working together uh, on non-aligned, we are members of OIC. Pakistan was one of the founding members of OIC and Indonesia joined in with a lot of enthusiasm. Um, our world vision is very similar. Of course. Uh, we are from different, uh, you know, geographic regions. Uh, Indonesia hosts uh, ASEAN headquarters. Of course. And uh, when we were there in Malaysia, uh, we tried to get Pakistan sectoral partnership successfully. 
uh, but as yet we have not been able to get full dialogue partnership because once India gets into an organization, whichever organization, they create problems for Pakistan. Right. And uh, with that lobbying, we have yet not reached the potential which we wanted to. Of course, uh, we are not ASEAN countries. Right, right, and there is a lot of potential we will be exploring later in the program, Mr. Shayar. Uh, of course, uh, like Ambassador has also highlighted that Bandung Conference was uh, one of the key uh, elements that brought both countries together. But uh, of course, uh, historical relation dates back uh, pre-partition as well. Uh, what uh, significance this Bandung Conference hold today? Of course, when we talk about in the context of BRICS as well, which we discussed in the program, because there are parallel drawns between these two in the international media as well, and how this uh, conference impacted uh, diplomatic ties and evolution of these ties between both the countries. So, Mariam, when it comes to the cooperation, uh, the diplomatic uh, friendship that exists between Indonesia and Pakistan, what we have to see in the context of the whole um, Muslim dynamic is that Indonesia is the largest uh, Muslim country in the world. Yes. Pakistan is the second largest. They have a combined population of over 500 million people. Yes. Other than that, uh, Indonesia is a very key economic player in ASEAN as well. And right. we have to keep in mind that the headquarters of ASEAN are also uh, established in Jakarta. Yes. Other than that, when it comes to economic uh, uh, power of ASEAN, we have to like see that the association of like 10 countries that basically formulates uh, ASEAN, it's uh, coming up as a global economic hub as well when it comes to Southeast Asia. The whole role of China as a global exporter of goods and net importer from ASEAN countries is increasing by the day. So these dynamics kept in mind, uh, the cooperation between uh, Pakistan and Indonesia is like something that needs to be capitalized further. I still think like the trade volume between Pakistan and Indonesia is like hovers between 2.5 to 4 billion dollars. But like this is not uh, commensurate to the relationship historically of as course. you mentioned that India and uh, Pakistan enjoy. And this given the preferential, preferential trade agreements and the defense cooperation agreements, this uh, relationship is not being realized to the potential that it can go up to. Right. So, uh, yeah, these are the areas that need uh, cooperation. Right. Uh, Dr. Sand, when we talk about Pakistan's relations with uh, Indonesia, of course, uh, Pakistan, Indonesia, our joint commission also played an important role in enhancing, in enhancing the bilateral uh, ties between both the countries. Can you elaborate on uh, the role of this commission and also uh, how the political ties between both the countries have evolved and uh, what are some of the significant uh, exchange of delegates between uh, both the countries in recent times? So, uh, if I talk about the archipelago of the nation, the Indonesian archipelago is very different from uh, the other world. I mean, it is a going to be the fourth largest economy, it would be. And uh, if I see uh, under the favor of the Pakistan and Indonesia, so the bilateral trade between the two countries is heavily in the favor of Indonesia. Uh, uh, as per import and export, because if I, uh, I mean, see through from the economic lens. So trade between two countries had reached 4 billion with more potential in future. So as during 2020, uh, Pakistan exported goods worth uh, 137.20 uh, million and imported uh, goods worth 2.40 billion, recording, uh, 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 recording a trade deficit of 2.26 billion, which is uh, not promising at all. So, uh, but, but there is a potential. Uh, let, let me talk about the potential. So, moreover, Pakistan uh, exports and continuously declined from the 30479 million. So, it is in 2018 to 137 million in the country, parallel to the Pakistan import, have imported in increase in 8.2 years on a year basis. The very important thing is that Pakistan and Indonesia signed a preferential trade agreement, a PTA, on 3rd uh, uh, Fab in 2002 in Jakarta. In which Pakistan agreed uh, to offer Pakistan access to 287 tariff line, while Indonesia offered 216 tariff line on preferential trade. So under the PTA, Indonesia offers uh, Pakistan access along 232 tariff lines, of which 103 are zero rated, which is very good. I mean, we must have to take up this. So this is one factor. And then is a preferential list includes uh, fresh fruits, cotton, yarn, uh, cotton fabric, ready-made garments, fan, sport goods, leather goods, and industry. So there are 
huge leverage to offer on but the zero percent market access is offered to the kino uh, which were uh, um, maridan uh, oranges from the pakistan providing level playing field to this product in the indonesia because it is a highly uh, highly in, in demand so next comes the pakistan offer to indonesia including 313 so uh, 313 tariff lines that includes item such as uh, edible palm oil product sugar confectionery cocoa products chemical knitwear rubber and wood glassware and uh, electronic products so pakistan has offered the same preferential trade agreement on the edible palm oil so this is very much right. important i would ask to the ministry of industries and to the uh, board of uh, investment that they must have to update and one more thing uh, 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 mariam I, i wanted to add it that i have uh, checked all of their websites these are all uh, uh, pakistan's all websites all all ministries websites are five years old uh, i mean uh, the, the whole of the data is completely five years older hmm. so it's not there updated. is no upgradation right. so this is very much important and then very important thing is malaysia under pakistan malaysia free trade, trade, trade agreement they are adjusting indonesia as well so palm oil in pakistan largest import from indonesia and coco uh, and the stepple field and other things and whole of the balance is very is not very much prom- promising as sir yar is uh, right. uh, i mean defining right. very but, well but it but is uh, the balance uh, uh, like you are also uh, uh, pointing out that uh, the trade volume is uh, basically in favor of indonesia what are the factors uh, that uh, we could address uh, to make it in favor of pakistan or maybe uh, equitable uh, balance or benefits could be provided to both the countries export holidays completely export holidays to the all of the economic zones i mean uh, i am very much i mean uh, let's take up the g20 let's take up the asian let, let's take up everything let's take up the uh, uh, i mean as i uh, mentioned all the uh, very uh, i mean accurate results of the f- uh, findings and i uh, presented to you on on uh, on, uh, on the ptv world so these are very important thing we must have to certify and understand this potential issue that we must have to align all the f- uh, foreign direct investment targets and we are already exporting all these but the export problems are there we have we don't have the quality assurance licensing and we have the weak uh, 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 export licensing so because of the weak export licensing there is a less uh, uh, i mean uh, export so we are in the millions and uh, imports are in the billions so imports are 4.3 billion so indonesia is taking much benefit of pakistan of course, so why of not course. we are taking the much benefit because as they are demanding that so we must have to balance this important export uh, uh, balance between both of them right this is very important uh, uh, let let me take this this dis- dis- discussion back to the studios ambassador uh, when we talk about uh, d8 of course both countries are member of d8 as well uh, so do you think uh, such platforms could uh, help in enhancing the economic relations between both the countries and what are the key challenges in your opinion um, that we could uh, tackle or address uh, to maybe make uh, the trade volume more in benefit of pakistan as well well Uh, I was a D8 commissioner for Pakistan, so I've been to their summits and conferences. Uh, D8 has a great potential, mm-hmm. although it's not much talked about. But the D8 economies are very important economies, mm-hmm. and uh, they have been working together to have a synergy in their trade and their economic development. But coming to your other question, how can we improve? I think we have to have two pronged approach. Firstly, let's examine why is the trade in favor of Indonesia? Hmm. We are importing palm oil from them. Yes, which is which is saturated uh, vegetable oil, right? right? Um, nowadays with, you know, this functional medicine that they talk about, saturated fat is bad for your of health. Course. Pakistan is the fourth largest buffalo country in the world. we have although you talk about dutch milk and dutch uh, cows it's pakistani cows and pakistani milk which is the best in the world if we started uh, start using ghee which is organic which is healthy back to our original self yes desi ghee desi ghee is awesome yes and doctors are telling it doesn't have any side effects yes 
and you would save so much of your foreign exchange mm. revenues in importing all these things which are bad for health anyway right. and you have resources mm. so i think in our planning division we have to think it out that we have this such a large amount how much of your milk is wasted mm. because you do not have ability to preserve it mm. Mm. and then marketing it to the masses exactly. and packaging it in a way that they are going to you know yes but that is certain elite of class course. the general masses are all right those big canisters with milk with you know the guys on yeah. the motorbike and right. he's serving let's promote them mm. let's start focusing on our organic food if you have to import it you are almost bankrupt mm. but if you start using your own resources and improving upon them your health will be good and your economic health will be better of course and coming back to d8 since you were a member of those discussions as well uh, how do you think that d8 has uh, facilitated the economic cooperation or could help facilitate economic cooperation between pakistan and indonesia when we talk about uh, traditional sectors as well as some of the non traditional sectors which hold potential you see d8 is eight countries it's not a bilateral mm, uh, of course. system you know so it is eight economies but finding but synergy but, but can we leverage our bilateral ties uh, on such multilateral forums as well definitely because you see turkey is also part of right. d8 iran is also part of d8 uh, malaysia is also part of d8 indonesia is part of d8 so we have bilateral ties which are further fortified when you get into a regional economic block so it kind of flows into each other definitely so you're right that we can leverage on that and we are doing it in the uh, meetings uh, they talk about all these areas whether it's about tariffs whether it's about trade whether it's about oil and gas whether you know all those issues are discussed so d8 has a very important agenda and we need to promote it and to be seen we are talking we are so obsessed with brics but nobody talks about d8 of course of course and d8 is much more important for us because it's relevant to our region of course you know so d8 is an important uh, body we do talk about it similarly eco it's an economic cooperation organization which is unfortunately uh, not as active as it could have been because of various reasons particularly instability in afghanistan because afghanistan is in the middle of central asia iran turkey and pakistan so once your heart is not well the body gets affected and that's what is happening to eco of course as far as sark is concerned that you know is already issues. because of india that yes is because the charter of sark says that the decisions should be taken with consensus consensus means all members agree and if one member uh, disagrees you can't take a decision so whether eight or uh, seven out of eight are in agreement this one major member can block it whatever it likes right of so course we have to focus where we can do things of course which is d8 which is asean asean of course we are sectoral partners we have to work to become a full dialogue partner for which when i used to talk with our interlocutors indonesians and malaysians they would say we have to enhance the volume of trade between our you know region and pakistan for that pakistan has to work hard when it comes to our own economy and our consumer mindset of you know your population masses of course masses. of course that is very important and when we talk about enhancing trade volume mr shahryar uh, connectivity remains an important issue and belt and road initiative is very significant when we talk about pakistan's uh, relations with indonesia as well uh, what are some of the initiatives in uh, which you think and what what are some of the sectors in which do you think uh, there's potential for indonesian investors to come and invest and that can generate fdi for pakistan as well Marim, that's a very uh, pertinent pertinent point. I want to take uh, uh, Madam Naila's point for further as well, and I also like want to point out an observation that with the most of these uh, uh, regional blocks that are emerging, let's take an example of ASEAN. Pakistan has been a very active member when it comes to the ASEAN Regional Forum. Right, of course. And with like a lot of like other SCO, mm. you know, a lot of these other uh, regional blocks. the core historical focus of pakistan has been security mm. 
and unfortunately Pakistan historically has been a very key partner for a lot of like countries a lot of like blocks when it comes to security and since now uh, in the last like five six years seven years Pakistan is moving its focus more from geopolitics to geoeconomics that is one of the stumbling blocks that I've observed because historically Pakistan hasn't like really um, paid a lot of attention when it comes to becoming part of the global value chains Pakistan hasn't really developed its in industry at that level in which Pakistan can uh, promote its own products or value added services mm. in the entire like global uh, dynamic now that this vision has changed and now we are moving towards developing an economy which relies more on geoeconomics mm. rather than the security centric mm. view and it has a uh, lot a lot to do with uh, the regional situation exactly. security situation exactly. as well exactly. because uh, we were stuck in war on terrorism as well yes. so of course we had to had it's uh, very unfortunate and as madam has very rightly pointed out that Afghanistan unfortunately stands out as a sore thumb when it comes to mm. the whole and you can't change dynamics. your neighbors you cannot like change your neighbors now all of the regional players or the regional stakeholders have this consensus that the peace and security in Afghanistan is very vital to getting all of these regional dynamics in order and we uh, very rightly discuss the whole dynamics that we can change between uh, Central Asia South Asia and the Middle East now uh, your question very pertinent that what can we provide Indonesia as an incentive to come and become part of the BRI network mm, because one because Indi Indonesia has shown interest and there's a, a lot, lot of, of interest, potential of a course. lot of interest secondly how can we attract investment foreign direct investment mm. to the special economic zones mm. that are there and what sec and, and what, what sectors, sectors what sectors so when it comes to Indonesia we'll have to like basically see what their core exports are mm. again as madam has like uh, rightly pointed out Pakistan historically has been importing palm, palm oil. oil palm oil I can like tell you now has, does not have like a lot of potential in the future because now the world is moving more towards organic, uh, yes. organic sustainable yes. sustainability and like health takes a lot of precedence now other than that Indonesia is like very good when it comes to textiles it's very good when it comes to uh, rice uh, when it comes to agricultural produce and like you know and that is much needed in Middle East Middle East imports a lot of its agricultural produce from various developing countries which have a more agricultural focus so uh, when it comes to uh, research in increasing the per acre yield mm. of our mm. uh, agriculture Indonesia can give you a lot of support when it comes to textile manufacturing when it comes to electronics value added services that is like the technical expertise mm. that Indonesia can bring to your special economic zones it will have have a dual effect it will train your human resource it will provide the much needed technical assistance that is required to get our human resource at a level in which they can compete in the international uh, value chain system mm. unfortunately I think right now the whole potential of BRI is being missed by Pakistan because of the fact that we don't have the human resource that can actually play its part in the global mm -hmm. value chain and that's so like human something resource development remains on. a key to develop the skills and this set. is not just uh, uh, limited to Indonesia it's like limited to all countries that we want uh, to come to Pakistan and invest in special economic mm. zones this analysis will be remain the same for course, all the countries especially when we have such a young population exactly. more than 65 percent of our population exactly. is under the age of 35 years uh, so um, uh, when we uh, talk about different industries uh, Dr. Sen uh, halal food industry remains uh, a key element or a key factor in which there's a lot of opportunities for investment uh, in both countries uh, can you uh, tell us uh, more about this industry Yes, of course. Uh, um, I mean, of course, uh, Indonesia already have the very good halal uh, food industry and they have the certified halal food in the industry and they're exporting to the whole world. But uh, before that, I mean, I wanted to comment on that way. Like, uh, I mean, till how long we will uh, just, uh, I mean, giving the, uh, I mean, lame excuse to the Afghanistan. What about the competitiveness over in here in Pakistan? What about the improving human capital? It is about Afghanistan. How can we uh, blame Afghanistan every time and everywhere? So we need to come after uh, uh, upward, and we make we must have to have the 
foreign direct investment into the new pragmatic area so be very pragmatic and be very concise i just wanted to if you allow me i just wanted to tell you about the 1999 economic recovery plan by the indonesia we must have to learn from uh, from indonesia uh, somehow so since in 1999 the economy has recovered and growth accelerated to over 4 to 6 in an early in 2000 So in 2012, Indonesia was the second fastest growing G20 economy behind the China, and the annual growth rate of fluctuated around 5%. And where it was, Indonesia faced a recession of 2020 when economic growth was collapsed at minus minus 2.07. due to the covid and 1990 it was 1999 as i told you earlier about the economic recovery plan so this is all the lame excuses and every time i listen right, right. so it, let's let's move let's, it is not let's elaborate your point we'll dr stan well we we'll talk about if the halal industry if the other about the quota uh, quota management if uh, about the economic management if about the preferential trade agreement if about the uh, indonesia balance if about the ma- managerial challenges which is about the quota system to control import import permit hundred, uh, hurdles a frequent challenge in the regulation who will uh, why did why didn't they solve it in nine, from 90s till now of course Wonder very very them. relevant point that we need to upgrade uh, our websites and there should be uh, up to date data if we have to enhance our economic and ties we, uh, we will be taking a short break here and, and when we come back we will be exploring more about uh, the knowledge sharing between both the countries and of course uh, there's a lot of scope in digital uh, technologies and it sector as well what can we learn from indonesia we will be talking about this after short break Welcome back. We are talking about Pakistan's relations with Indonesia, and there is a lot of potential when we talk about uh, these ties. Uh, um, but there is there are challenges as well. Uh, so, Mr. Shahyar, when we talk about uh, Pakistan's uh, relations with Indonesia in IT sector and digitalization, is of course uh, uh, taking uh, precedent in uh, the global stage as well. Uh, so, what are some of the areas in which both countries can collaborate? so maryam uh, when it comes to jakarta jakarta in uh, south east asia is like fast becoming a hub for innovation uh, it's a very large city and they have like a lot of like expertise when it comes to digitization of various services that the government provides to its citizens when it comes to you know various services such as like uh, the uh, id guards or the any interaction that happens between the citizen and the state that is like now more or less digitized that is like something pakistan is also moving towards when it comes to nadra and like other uh, other digital services that pakistan provides other than that uh, uh, indonesia has a key expertise when it comes to digital financial services mm. and we know that in pakistan a lot of our and uh, islamic banking as islamic well, banking of as course. well so those are financial services right. and now globally financial services are moving towards digital financial right. services main reason for that is like a lot of like pakistan's population and in a lot of like developing countries our populations are unbanked most of the uh, population of pakistan is not capable of opening a bank account or they will not be allowed to enter a bank and these people need financial services these people need to come into the fold of the uh, regular economy of course so digital financial services basically offers this alternative to a lot of like people who would be reluctant to open their formal bank accounts so that's like where uh, pakistan and indonesia can definitely uh, learn and uh, the movement of these uh, services like insurance uh, if they want to like take housing loans and if they want to like start a business microfinance loan these have now uh, indonesia has this expertise to move all of these services into into the digital space so that's like where we can definitely talk right about. and when we talk about uh, different sectors uh, blue economy is something that is gaining potential uh, and recognition globally as well uh, Uh, what are some of the areas uh, in which uh, do you think that indonesia can invest in pakistan or uh, there is bilateral investment opportunities for both the countries in this i would say we could have a three pronged approach firstly uh, to attract their investments in our blue economy mm. uh, secondly uh, technical know how 
because uh, we have beautiful, uh, you know, our continental shelf uh, is long. So, we have lot of uh, marine life uh, which is pure and the waters are clean, but we do not have that level of packaging facility. Mm -hmm. And with blue economy, if your packaging facility is not good enough, they perish. You cannot export it, so you cannot encash it. Indonesia has well developed uh, technology in that because their blue economy is very strong. Of course. Consequently, we can have a technical uh, know-how exchange, hmm. learn from their technology, hmm. knowledge sharing, uh, knowledge, sharing knowledge sharing not only in blue economy but also our universities are working together. Of so course. many Indonesian students are coming here and learning from us and we are also sending our students there. So that is another dimension but the technology exchange, expertise exchange. Right would help us enhance our blue economy. Mm. And when we, when we talk about uh, maritime cooperation, do you think there is potential in uh, extending uh, the bilateral ties in that uh, sector? And also Definitely. when we talk about uh, ASEAN as well, is there some, uh, some uh, avenue in ASEAN as well uh, in which both countries can collaborate uh, in enhancing cooperation in maritime? Uh, maritime, uh, how do you define maritime? Because it can be in the context of defense, both, it can both. be in context maritime of trade. Maritime security, uh, fighting against exactly. piracy. Exactly. Yes. In that we are already working. Right. And then ASEAN also has that, uh, you know, system because uh, against piracy, yes. against all those things. So we have a strong potential of further enhancing our cooperation in the field of maritime. Uh, but when it comes to SEZ, we need to attract the FDIs by attracting their investors mm. uh, and there are many areas, for example, agriculture. Uh, then in low cost housing also, they have well developed technology, mm. they can build houses fast and not as expensive. Mm. Economic. Economic. Uh, actually, Indonesia is doing a lot of export on that. But here, we want to have them invest in our systems so that we also enhance our capacity. Of course, uh, that is uh, significant when we talk about economic ties and maritime, that is also important. But when we talk about uh, the Indo-Pacific uh, region, uh, there are some uh, uh, geopolitical shifts and uh, dynamics are changing. Uh, how do you think that Pakistan can play a key role or significant role uh, in ASEAN uh, and uh, what role can Indonesia play in helping Pakistan in that regard? That discussion has been going on for last three decades, mm -hmm. uh, how Pakistan can help. As I said, we are sectoral partners, we are not yet full dialogue partners. Until we become that, we really can't uh, So what do are much. some of the prerequisites that Pakistan still has to meet? As I said, uh, it's volume of trade. Mm -hmm. We have to start enhancing our exports uh, to them. Uh, we have to have, uh, because our volume of trade with each ASEAN member country is not Of course, that in favor of those countries. Yes. Not just in those countries, the volume is very less. Yeah. I mean, what trade have you with Myanmar? Mm. What trade level have you with Singapore? What level of trade have you with Malaysia and Indonesia? Mm. Indonesia, you have right. more because you're importing from right. them. But with the formulation of SIFC, uh, we yeah. are uh, optimistic that uh, some of these challenges are going to be addressed by that platform. So, uh, but Dr. Sam, when we talk about uh, different uh, areas of cooperation, of course, uh, strategic uh, cooperation and uh, security cooperation remains a key sector. Can you elaborate, uh, uh, elaborate on this sector between both the countries? Yes, in recent days, and I'm, I'm, I'm just heard, uh, hearing a news, I mean, uh, we are going to have the joint collaboration within the China, and we are uh, having the joint collaboration with Indonesia, and of course, with the Korea as well. So these are the security challenges we are covering, and we are tackling, and we are uh, having the bilateral, trilateral, and multilateral uh, developments in that security area specifically. But uh, uh, as far as the economic collaboration, yes, we are on it. And as far as the security challenges, according to uh, along with the economic collaboration, Pakistan is an important country due to the, its strategic location, as we all know that. But the Central Asian, Middle East, and the China. 
So similarly, Indonesia can provide Pakistan gateway for the association of the South Asian nation, ASEAN bloc. And Pakistan is also interested in giving uh, Indonesia market access to its region by pushing the private sector of the both countries to come closer uh, through the dialogue so that the two economies can get together better outcome by the connecting with each other and Indonesia is also interested in investing in Pakistan in a special economic zone which is very much important and this has been written uh, by the Indonesia to Pakistan and which is very promising and being developed uh, under the China Pakistan economic Do corridor which uh, could be an uh, important FDI opportunity for Pakistan and they are also want to have a joint collaboration but Indonesia is quite very peaceful and they are a non combating uh, sort of the uh, country and they are very relaxed in that so but they wanted to have to uh, I mean the complete uh, uh, security uh, challenges and they they are focusing on it but the Pakistan business community to look on the Ind uh, Indonesia as a trade hub for the expanding its export to huge market as you are telling about the marine time so this is a huge sector you are talking about very rightly about and this is a huge gap we must have to tackle it as uh, 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 my recommendation uh, uh, into the, that area is that we must have to explore in the marine time which has security concerns of course we can collaborate in the blue economy and you're touching upon the blue economy which is very much important and yes uh, 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 marine time is their focus area and their focal area, they must have to uh, introduce their startups, their unicorn. And uh, by the way, Indonesia is a unicorn in their startups. And also, they are the they have uh, enhanced their IT potential so that we can uh, convert into Pakistan in a better way. So uh, we can learn the marine time structure and development and the uh, architecture of the marine time uh, transferred to the Indonesia from the Pakistan. That would be very good. Right, that would be very good. Uh, Mr. Sharyar, of course, when we talk about uh, strategic and defense security cooperation between uh, Indonesia and Pakistan, uh, both countries are in the regions that have security concerns and challenges. Uh, how do you think that uh, in this sector, both countries can collaborate so that we can evolve uh, uh, more uh, in cooperation? So, Mariam, uh, Pakistan and Indonesia signed a defense cooperation agreement in 2010. And that defense cooperation is mainly uh, focusing on the aviation sector because uh, uh, Indonesia has an expertise when it comes to developing uh, transport military airplanes. Pakistan develops its own JF-17 uh, jets. So there is like potential in which like both of these uh, countries can collaborate when it comes to aviation industry when it comes in the defense realm. Other than that, there is a, a similarity when it comes to Indonesia and Pakistan and um, uh, we need to focus more on it. Indonesia has also been a victim of terrorism just of like uh, Pakistan. Um, Indonesia being a very diverse uh, population, it has a huge Hindu and a Christian population as well. And uh, being the largest Muslim country in the world, it is also uh, has a secular uh, constitution because of that reason. But despite that, it's a very important member in OIC as well. Indonesia has a lot of expertise when it comes to countering terrorism because it faces a lot of threats from ISIS, Al-Qaeda and like other organizations. But the expertise that Indonesia has basically de developed, which Pakistan can learn from, is in countering violent, violent mm -hmm. extremism and developing uh, social cohesion and harmony between various diverse religious groups. So when it comes to that, Indonesia has expertise in legislation border control. Okay. And that is like somewhere Pakistan and Indonesia can uh, elaborate, uh, elaborate and cooperate a lot. Other than that, uh, when it comes to countering terror financing, Indonesia has like very uh, important legislations and it's also a very important uh, member, uh, observe, it has an observer status in FATF as well. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to uh, developing legislation and countering terror financing, Indonesia has a lot of expertise. Other than that, when it comes to developing uh, ra de-radicalization programs, countering violent extremism programs, because Indonesia also suffers from the fact that a lot of like Indonesian nationals also went to Syria and like they became like fighters yes, in of that. Course, and when they, it's a major when yeah. they returned, what do you do with these fighters? Pakistan faced the same mm -hmm. issue. Pakistan is still dealing with the terrorism issue. What Indonesia did different was they developed de-radicalization programs when they basically uh, these people returned, they went into rehabilitation centers for like two to three months 
right. and then they were released into the society. Of course, and when we talk about de radicalization, yeah. cultural exchanges, and tourism exactly. plays an important role. Um, uh, uh, can you tell us uh, lastly about the cultural exchange and how can uh, we enhance uh, cultural exchange between both the countries in maybe uh, TVs, films as well? And how do you see the future trajectory of relations between Pakistan and Indonesia? So, this is like something that is common between both Indonesia and Turkey. Mm. So, Indonesia has a huge ter uh, tourism industry mm. when, and we know about the Bali Islands and like the uh, other like um, mm. uh, tourist hubs and destinations. And Pakistan also has potential, potential for religious for tourism, uh, tourism, as well. tourism as well. Religious tourism as well as, uh, as, well as like uh, geographical tourism up north and of like course, other eco-tourism, historical tu tourism, religious tourism. But we haven't again realize the potential at, and we are not operating at the level, not even one tenth of the le level at which Indonesia is like, you know, uh, operating at. So the expertise when it comes to developing resorts, when it de uh, comes to developing uh, uh, services that uh, general tourists would require, Indonesia can definitely support. A lot of like Indonesian students come to Pakistan and study in Pakistani universities, of course. but I don't see that like exchange uh, taking a lot more volume than it can. And I think like uh, when there's like more cooperation between people to people, business to business, so there are like more areas and opportunities to basically learn from both sides. Okay. And that's like one area where Indonesia and uh, Pakistan can collaborate in the future. As of well. course. Thank you very much, Mr. Sher Yar Khan for joining us in today's program. Thank you very much, Ambassador Naila Johan for joining us in today's program. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Stan Javed for joining us in today's program. Of course, in today's program, we talked about Pakistan's relations with Indonesia. Uh, both countries uh, have historic ties, of course, which have evolved over time. Uh, but there's a lot of potential when we talk about enhancing uh, the economic relations between both the countries. Cultural exchanges can be enhanced in educational uh, sector. There is a lot of potential in which both countries can collaborate and on multilateral uh, forums as well, both countries can uh, cooperate as well. Uh, that's all from Game Changer tonight. Take care. Allah Hafiz.